Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Joseph Parker fought for two years in court to keep his name suppressed after he was named in court as being connected with what's being described as an international methamphetamine ring. So the New Zealand authorities felt strongly enough about his involvement or alleged involvement that they could implicate him in a major trial of three men back in 2019. And since then, he's been fighting a rearguard action to keep his name out of the press, out of the public domain. But not only that, police, they were able to secure a warrant to search his phone, his property, but ultimately did not do so. And when you consider the seriousness of the accusations, very curious, and you have to ask, well, why didn't they? They had uh, obviously secured a warrant. What happened? Why didn't they execute it? But before I get into a whole host of issues related to this, related to this because there's a lot to unpack quite a bit of fallout from this i mean i think this has taken a lot of people by surprise it's important to stress that the allegations leveled against parker they have not been tested in court and parker strenuously denies any involvement but we will come to that but in this video what i'll do is i'll step through a bit of an overview of the situation including parker's denial and then I'll get to some thoughts towards the back end of the video, about halfway through, something like that, uh, about the damage to his reputation, what it might mean for his boxing career, and then a few other peripheral issues, because clearly he legged it to the UK just a few days before this whole thing broke. So, you know, you have to ask the question, well, clearly he knew this was coming, but... I'm sure that the news of Joseph Parker being allegedly connected to a drug ring, this has taken a lot of people by surprise, especially given, you know, until now he's had a squeaky clean family man, clean cut sort of image. And I know that some of what I would call casual boxing fans that have spoken to me here in New Zealand, you know, after this news came out, they've been shocked by it. They kind of find it rather unbelievable that they just really can't fathom that this guy who's uh, held up as a hero in New Zealand for his um, accomplishments in the ring, etc., they can't believe that he's um, connected to this and how this has all come about. And I guess, you know, to, to an extent, you know, I find it rather shocking as well. But there had been stories for some considerable time in the New Zealand media referencing a famous sports person tied in with a meth ring. And actually, there was it was mentioned that there was a couple of famous people and some of the issues around it were muddied by the lack of detail that could be reported. And as I mentioned, another sports person. So it really wasn't clear what was going on. And but there was the the, the carrot of something big, some big name uh, sports person that was allegedly involved and that is being named as Parker. So what exactly is it that he has been alleged to have done or been involved in? So if we step back, 2019, there's a trial. So his name was repeatedly mentioned by prosecutors, and these are the three guys on screen. Um, it was They set out their case against these guys at the High Court in Auckland, uh, or is it at Auckland in 2019, and it was alleged Parker had uh, been changing New Zealand dollars into US currency for one of these guys to buy drugs in California. And when investigators searched one of the three men's phones, they found an exchange between uh, this guy Kulu, who is on the left, and a drug dealer in California, in which the pair apparently negotiated prices for meth. And one of the messages related to Parker. It said, all right, bro, I got you, though have all your money. The dude I was with that's on my Snapchat is going to change it to US currency. They won't question him about all the money because he's the uh, WOB, meaning WBO, of course, boxing champion. So people know he's rich anyway, so he'll be good to change it with no hassles. The Crown also alleges that Parker had been in, uh, buying drugs from Fino. This is the guy on the right hand of the screen now and offering to set him up with a new contact. And it was also reported that in an exchange um, on the social media platform Wicker, that there was an account in the name of Joe Boxer Parker. It's alleged that he told Fino, trust me, it's the best stuff out. 
And partway through the legal action, this is when Parker jumped in. He filed a sworn affidavit in the court saying, I've never uh, changed or transported money for the defendants. I've never been involved in the purchase, supply or consumption of methamphetamine. And those guys, they were found gu uh, guilty, the ones that were up on trial. After Parker's name was able to be made public because uh, he'd lost the sort of battle to keep it secret, Parker, through his lawyer, Michael Heron, vigorously denied the claim, saying, this has been going on for ages now, and it takes a toll. I haven't been charged with anything, and it doesn't feel right that my name will be connected to matters I've had no chance to defend myself against. It's a terrible position to be in. Things have been said about me that are quite untrue. Some of them have already been proven untrue, and I was given no chance to respond at the time they were made. It's caused a lot of stress and worry for myself and my family. And it just seems totally wrong. Having said that, I need to accept the decision, get on with my life. I have other fights to fight. And his lawyer, Michael Heron, also added uh, to media, if there was relevant, reliable, credible evidence that there was offending by Mr. Parker, they would have charged him. Despite the lack of evidence against him, unfounded allegations were made against Mr. Parker in court. Those allegations were not supported by evidence, were unnecessary and were unfair. Unfortunately, those matters were beyond the control of Mr. Parker. So Parker and his lawyers, they fought for two years through various parts of the New Zealand judicial system to keep his name suppressed. They wanted his name suppressed forever, arguing that he could miss out on lucrative fights. And I don't quite agree with that, but I'll come to that a bit later. And also that the heavyweight would be subject to trial by media. And his sister and manager Elizabeth had stated Parker's reputation could be damaged irreparably. And you know what? She's right. And it's almost, you know, of no consequence now whether he's guilty or not, because it's somewhat immaterial to an extent, because the accusation and his name are out there deeply intertwined and will forever be so. His squeaky clean image, the clean-cut family man, the so-called Gentleman Joe, as the New Zealand media had dubbed him, that public persona has taken an absolute battering and he's uh, been obviously put in the fryer. And in my view, so much so that his reputation is unlikely to ever fully recover, in particular in New Zealand. Consider this, Parker is the face of New Zealand boxing. He'd been considered among the most well-known sporting stars in New Zealand. He was a role model to children and adults alike, etc. All that is in jeopardy now. He's going to have the stench of being attached to a drug ring forever. It becomes a footnote that is forever connected with his name. So, to some extent, the whole argument that they were running by trial by media... I think that's quite a valid argument that they tried to make because we've already seen the rush and the wave of reporting. It does imply a level of guilt, even if only by association. And just the mention of it, it'll have a number of people going, OK, must have been part of it, and they will swear off him. Some people will hear the coverage, not digest everything and just be anti-Parker from now on. It just is what it is, human nature, that sort of stuff happens. And honestly, I don't know if he did any of this, but it is important to note he was never charged and these claims were never tested in court. And I have to reiterate that to try to give some balance to this video. But in saying all that, the public reaction in New Zealand has been one of shock and I think more so surprise. I mean, given the seriousness of the claims, it's, you know, it will, you know, have an ongoing impact on his popularity, at least in New Zealand. His brand is now damaged goods. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he had some sponsors that reevaluate and potentially um, drop him. That's just sort of what happens when these sort of situations occur. You know, someone gets the stench of something and others don't want to be associated with it. And I could see some fans sort of turning off and um, maybe sort of uh, his at least popularity in New Zealand certainly takes a hit. And in the wash up of some of the reporting on this in New Zealand, there's been some pundits suggesting and speculating that his boxing career could be negatively impacted by this. His ability to secure big fights could be jeopardized. And I guess I would say to that, what a naive position to take. Clearly, the New Zealand media, and I've said this, you know, loudly and often before, have no idea about boxing, how it operates. 
boxing as we know is the red light district it is the absolute wild west anything goes scandals are a dime a dozen and often forgotten about to a large extent within months especially if there's money to be made in parker's case it won't stop him getting fights it may just change the perception of him to an extent with some fans and this whole sort of outrage or whatever people think about it it will fade it always does and opponents though they may use it like um, the allegations etc as trash talk to try get under his skin but the main thing for parker in his career is to keep winning and in the process winning well having impressive performances and for parker that seems to be the biggest issue right now is he's actually got to look good in a win as opposed to grinding something out that people go yawn i don't want to see that again he's got to have an eye-catching win and if he gets that his boxing career is going to be fine it's more his reputation amongst the new zealand people that i believe is probably impacted for the long term but i will say that Parker hustling to the UK in the days before these allegations came out certainly does not seem like a coincidence, does it? And some might say, oh, well, you know, he's going to be fighting Chisori, had to get over there. But I would also say, well, we've got some history to sort of actually compare with this sort of stuff. Previously, him and his promoter, which is now his advisor slash manager, David Higgins, they've made a lot of noise a big song and dance about that they won't leave and start a training camp unless they have a deal done that they demand certain things to be done by a certain date or the fight's off really wasn't much of that this time at all there was just sort of a, a cursory sort of line or two to the media from higgins um but it wasn't the same sort of vociferous type statements and were um you know stuff he said before and especially when you consider that fight's on May the 1st or meant to be on May the 1st, what, six and a half weeks and change or whatever, it hasn't been announced yet. And at the time Parker left New Zealand, we knew through social media, between interactions between Parker and Chisora, there wasn't even a signed contract in place. But with all these allegations uh, coming out, etc., no better place for Parker to be to be overseas out of New Zealand when the storm hits. And I have to say, it does make me wonder about the change of trainer situation as well. And maybe this is just a little aside here. The whole leaving Kev Kevin Barry situation. I mentioned in a video after the whole split happened that the timing seemed off. Why now? What happened? Why now? Because they, they just won a fight and he was planning Parker at least to be fighting within weeks. And I think most of us just thought, oh yeah, well, Parker had decided um, to give Barry the flick. He was the one in control of that. But maybe there was more at play here. You have to consider that. Maybe actually Barry was aware some of this was coming out and decided as part of, you know, a, a number of issues that that was just another factor to perhaps, um, you know, confirm the split. I don't know. But we have to consider this, especially in light of what's come out. I guess we have to reevaluate re a few things. And maybe one of the other things to reevaluate from the past couple of years is that perhaps one of the reasons that Parker has just been in a constant treadmill of um, journeyman fights for the most part is that um, this, these peripheral issues that they didn't want to, with all everything else going on and potential distractions and the potential to, to impact his performance, and maybe it did. Maybe they just decided that they didn't want to have some of these big fights with everything else going on. I don't know. You have to look at that. But he was on this DAZN deal, got very well paid to face Shondell Winters and Alex Leopay in fights that nobody wanted, nobody was calling for. And obviously had another fight against Junior Farr, which was a step up from that, but ultimately wasn't the fights that Parker should have been in in the past couple of years. So now he's apparently going to be facing Derek Chisora. We'll see what happens with that. No fight announcement as of yet. Um, but this whole situation... Joseph Parker's name, it's in tatters, being dragged through the mud, through the media now. But potentially there is some, just a little more than smoke here. Some people will say this is completely unsubstantiated, but you have to imagine the Crown prosecutors name dropping him repeatedly in a case. It's not just, you know, I mean, having a warrant in place, but obviously not executing it. There's a certain threshold that has to be met to get to that point. So there's more than a little bit of smoke here, but Parker completely denying any involvement. But his guilt, and at least in terms of his reputation being tarnished now, it's almost immaterial because some people will think by default, um, because of these allegations that he's guilty, whether or not you know he is, 
almost immaterial now, as I say, because it's all out there and he's got to live with this and obviously people will react accordingly. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.